Hi, I'm Lisa Pritchard. I'm a centred riding instructor and a riding posture specialist based in Cheshire, England. And from this year, I've decided I'm going to do a little uh, video diary uh, about some of the things that interest me with uh, teaching riding, some of the things that concern me a little bit, some of the things that amuse me, uh, and uh, see where it takes me. I'm hoping that people will enjoy, agree, disagree, um, and have their own opinions too, and that would be great. So anyway, I thought I'd kick off today with riding, actually the quality of riding today and the kind of things that have changed over the years. I'm quite old and I started riding in the early 1960s and I was lucky enough to have my own pony from the age of 11 onwards and I've ridden at riding club level and I've competed on teams and I've worked with horses. I ran a trekking centre down in Cornwall in the early 80s and I've done bits and bobs and all the rest of it and I've developed an interest in actually the quality of how to teach people riding um, because my own riding wasn't great and I reached a point where it was starting to work against both me and my horse. So I discovered things like the Alexander Technique and centered riding and how you actually use your body more effectively and I've been doing that for a long time now since the late 1980s um, and, and it's made me realize that there are no quick fixes and also that there are far too many people who own horses today who I believe hand on heart aren't getting the pleasure out of that horse ownership that people like me have been able to have over the years and, and I really do believe that horse owning and horse riding is one of the most fun, exciting, rewarding things that you can do and I think when you have restrictions on what you feel you can and can't do with a horse that limit your enjoyment, that's a shame. I mean I've been very fortunate, I've had nice horses and I learned to ride at a time where the way that we were taught to ride was fairly, shall we say, robust and that you were just, you know, sent down jumping grids with no reins and no stirrups and you just kept falling off until you stopped falling off and you were on the lunge with no reins and no stirrups and you had to go across country with no stirrups and, you know, every time you fell off you were just yelled out to say, get back on and off you went. Uh, and, and it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal, but frankly, you know, there were many of us who fell by the wayside quite sensibly. They decided that they wanted to do something that did not involve them eating dirt on a regular basis and breaking bones or potentially breaking bones. And, you know, they, they decided that horse riding wasn't going to be for them and they'd take up a, a more genteel hobby. Those of us that were brave enough or foolish enough, whichever you way you want to uh, describe it, uh, we learned to stick on. Um, and, and we had confidence, you know, we, we because we stuck at it, we, we were obviously quite confident riders because we didn't mind falling off. Uh, and we were younger too and we bounced and that does make a big difference, believe you me. Um, so those of us that were lucky enough to have our own horses, we didn't really have any kind of restrictions on ourselves. We, we, we weren't bothered about riding on our own. We weren't bothered about riding in company. We expected to jump pretty much every day when we went out hacking you you jump ditches you jump on tree trunks you know you you put up little jumping lanes in various places and you jumped you know even if you went off and did showing as well everybody jumped and i think that definitely helped with the quality of our seats we did have a more independent seat we didn't go round and round in arenas for the simple reason that there were no arenas you know we went out we act out and we did in straight lines you know everywhere up and down hill and dale but we very rarely said oh no i don't think i can do that you know you know we we didn't think oh god i'd never go hunting you'd just go you know and you'd 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 either go at the back or in the middle or you'd be hanging on trying not to overtake the hounds in the front and when everybody else went over a fence you went over it too whether you liked it or not sometimes or sometimes you didn't end up over the fence or sometimes you and the horse ended up on each other sides of the fence 
but that was all the name of the game it didn't really occur to us that the that this was not something that you had an option i mean today and don't get me wrong i think it's fantastic that you've got people like the um the hunts that are now saying come out hunting with us and we will actually put you in a group where you don't have to jump fences so you can come out and you can ride in company and you can go and and i think that's great i do i think it gives people an opportunity who perhaps may have given up jumping and i class myself in that group to still go out and enjoy a day out with a group of people and ride at speed across country without having to face fences but in some ways it's giving people these options not to do stuff anymore that is starting to put restrictions on people as well you know they, they, they will think well like i can't my horse doesn't like riding in company or they'll take their horse out once and it rides in company and and they have a horrible experience because the horse turns into a raving nutcase and frightens the pants off them and i completely understand that the problem is that they need to have somebody or some bodies around them saying you know if you keep taking your horse out it will stop being so excited it will stop being so difficult if you keep doing the thing that is difficult the horse will with practice will get better at it and i don't think there's enough of that so people will go and they'll have a horrible day so they know i won't do that anymore um and then something else happens and they go out somewhere and the horse naps and they can't get the horse to go forward or it puts a little half rear in or it bucks or it does something like this all of which does happen with horses i mean it, that's just the name of the game they are horses and now and then they will do something where they will ob object to it and then the riders say that scared me i don't really want to do that anymore um so their their comfort zone gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until in the end they're trapped in an arena and they're going round and around the arena and then inevitably there's a scary corner of the arena and the horses want to go to the scary corner so they end up working in half the arena and then something else happens and then they say they just don't they stop riding and and you, you know you probably wouldn't be amazed but you will all know people who have got their horse and their horse is a lovely big dog pet and they they're not riding now my view is if the rider if the horse owner is perfectly happy not riding and enjoys doing stuff on the ground with their horse and just loves them their horse has a night fine i'm not judging anybody that doesn't want to ride anymore and just wants to mess about with their horse on the ground and if you're both if you're happy with that really happy fine that's great that is great i would be the first one to say that's absolutely brilliant however if you are one of the legion of people who own a horse who wish that they could do the things that they bought the horse to do but they can't because they're fearful and they think oh, the horse can't do this and they can't do that and all the rest of it then i really do think that they've got to take a hard look and say this is not going to be an easy road to do this but i have to overcome this people who are on yards where nobody rides or they're on yards where perhaps they might keep their horse in a very small yard or at home where they're not getting any support that's going to be a really hard task for them to do if you've got a difficulty with a horse and you're on your own or you're nearly on your own or you've got people around you who are more hindrance than help then you know you are stuck and when i come across people like that and i do come across quite a few people like that and they, they come to me and they say can you help um, I have to be absolutely honest with them and say, look, you know, I think the first thing you need to consider doing is moving somewhere where you're going to get a lot of help with your horse and you're going to get a lot of help with your riding. Uh, and this is not going to be a quick fix. It's not going to be something that, you know, you can suddenly, you know, have nerve where you didn't have nerve or your horse is suddenly going to behave in a calm and sensible way when it hasn't behaved in a calm and sensible way. Uh, you're going to need to have some help and and unfortunately unless you are extremely lucky that's going to cost money um, and i think one of the truisms that are bound today that rather than buying a thirty-four thousand pound horse it is better to buy a one thousand pound horse and have thirty-three thousand pounds worth of 
lessons um, and that's and that's really support and being in the right place including in that lessons and I'd like to see a lot more of that because it does bother me that we've got so many people who think they have realized their dream when they buy their dream horse and that dream turns to ashes far too quickly when the first thing that goes wrong goes wrong and they don't know what to do about it and they're scared and then they're and they feel guilty because they're not riding and you know and then they feel bad about the horse or they, oh, and then they're getting themselves into this complete spiral until they reach a point where actually frankly they're really quite difficult to help and and i do want to give the advice to some people say give yourself a break part with your horse and then start again um but i know very few people feel able to take that sort of advice um but just think about it why did you buy the horse did you buy the horse because you wanted to enjoy riding your horse you wanted to go places you wanted to go out and do things and have fun with your horse are you actually doing that and if the answer is no then you might want to have a bit of a rethink about what you're doing because you know it should be fun so that's my musings for today bye